turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, in the King James Bible, the real Bible. I expect you to go there in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. I expect you to follow along in your Bible, your King James Bible, the real Bible. We are going to be reading to begin in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. Go there and follow me along, please. Lord, my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior and God, I am incapable of doing this, Lord. I I'm not a teacher. I can't preach your word. You, Lord, you do this. Please, Lord, have mercy upon me that you may speak to this congregation through the lips of one who is unclean, who is, uh, who is the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low. Please speak to this congregation. Guide me through the scriptures. Guide them through the scriptures if they follow along. I hope they do. Watch over my mouth and may this word Cut the hearts of some who may watch, who may listen, Lord, Father. And I ask this in your name, Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ's name, Father. God's people said, Amen. All right, we will be reading Matthew chapter 7 to begin, verses 15 on to verse 20. Now, this is a part of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount was not given to Christians. There wasn't one Christian as we know them today when Jesus spake the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is the doctrine, doctrine of the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. But there's a lot that we can um, get from the Sermon on the Mount. A lot of stuff that crosses dispensational lines and that are general truths for us today. We're going to be looking at one of the, uh, one right now. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 20. We begin. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Hold your place there. And go to Galatians chapter 2, very quickly, very quickly, Galatians chapter 2, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because, oh, we begin at verse 4, excuse me. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour, 
that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Also, while we're at it, Titus. Remember what it says in Philippians? Uh, hold on before we go to... Um, before we read to, uh, go to Titus, remember uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead and uh, go there, please, if you want. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord... To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. You know, the sagging skin suit, no confidence in the flesh. Titus, chapter 1, very familiar verses, verses 15 and 16. Unto the pure, Titus chapter 1, verses 15 on the verse 16. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. False converts, false brethren. Um, here's a news flash for you there, brother, sister. Uh, there's quite a few of those out there nowadays, isn't there? Probably far more now today than there were of yesterday. Wouldn't you agree? With this deplorable, despicable, vile doctrine of easy believism, which does a hop, skip, and a jump over brokenness of self and goes straight to the belief without dealing with the brokenness. Easy believism heretics will preach conviction of sin. You can be convicted, but not broken of your sin. You can know that you're a sinner doing sin, but are you broken over it? See, brokenness. Brokenness is the key ingredient. And that brokenness will lead you on to genuine saving faith. You don't jump over the brokenness and go straight to belief. Or else, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 again, verses 21 under verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now very quickly, kingdom of heaven, right there, is a reference to the actual, physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem that our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ our Father, will be reigning from when he come back. He was offering this kingdom unto the Jewish people at this time. You have to understand that, if anything. <laughs> okay? Especially when it comes to the Sermon on the Mount. The Catholics really like the Sermon on the Mount because it's all works. Faith is mentioned only one time 
in the Sermon on the Mount. You read it on your own time and you find it. O ye of little faith. One time in the Sermon on the Mount is faith ever mentioned. And it is not to be assumed that they had the saving faith when the king was right there offering them the kingdom. See? But it's important to note that when it says right there the kingdom of heaven, that's talking about an actual kingdom that will be in Jerusalem. Okay? Very important. Very important. And we today, as Bible-believing Christians, King James Bible believers, we are not building a kingdom down here. Man is not going to bring in a kingdom that is going to endure for a thousand years. Only God manifests in the flesh. Ruling and reigning from Jerusalem is going to do that, because only God can do it. See, it's important to know that. Okay, let's continue. Let's read that again. I have every have to explain that. Because people who are not dispensational, who do not rightly divide the word of truth, fall into that hang up. Every time. Every time. Let's continue. Rereading again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Hence my explanation. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Are you looking at verse 23? And then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye. Plural. Ye. That work iniquity. Do you know who Jesus Christ really is? Do you know him? How do you know him? Because of your heart? <laughs> because of your heart, right? The heart is desperately wicked. The, heart, the imagination of our heart is only evil continually. See, that's why being broken of your self-righteousness is imperative to your salvation. Okay. And then when you, like I said, you got people jumping over that and going straight to belief and not dealing with the brokenness of self, but saying first get saved, then deal with it. No, 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 no. You're eating the sandwich backwards, friends. Okay. But there are false converts. There are false brethren out there. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Many people say they are Christians. Many, 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 many people say they are Christians. Don't they? How do you know? How do you know they're the real deal, so to speak? Because of a feeling in your heart? Because you feel? There's a certain individual who I'm not going to name who really pushes and drives home the point that the only way you can truly know if someone is truly saved or born again is if you meet them personally face to face and shake their hand. That's the only way you can ever truly know if someone is saved and born again, right? Some of you may know who to whom I'm referring to. And I'm not going to mention the guy's name. Because I don't trust that man. Not at all. If that makes you mad at me, I'm so sorry. But I don't trust him. Not at all. 
See, there's a problem with the putting up the defense like, okay, the only way you can truly know if someone is truly, genuinely saved and born again is if you get to meet them personally, face to face, in the flesh, you know, shake, here, shake your hand. That's the only way you're ever going to truly know. Who says something like that? Maybe someone who might have something to hide. I don't know. But see, now let me put this into a perspective. 100% <laughs> of all of you who subscribe to my pathetic nothing little channel, friends, brethren, sisters, and foes, I ain't never met one of you personally face to face in the flesh. I've had email correspondence with several of you, yes. I've even had um, Google Hangouts with several of you, yes. But that's not a physical, you know, sharing the same air as my father likes to say, my dad, you know, not sharing the same air. But yet I know that a majority of you are truly saved and born again. Truly saved and truly born again. But yet I've never met you personally. It's kind of strange, isn't it? And there's another part to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Whoa, whoa, you went too far, Brad. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to be reading verses 1 through verse 6. Now, I, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through verse 6. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you, with that confidence, wherein I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Walked according to the flesh, you know, the skin suit. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Question. What is our weapon? What is the weapon? The sword of the Spirit, the King James Bible, the real Bible. How do you know? By heart? By a feeling? By a handshake? <laughs> But see, false converts, false brethren are out there, obviously, obviously. And those who are false like to do things according to the flesh, don't they? And you know what? Also, one of the biggest things that false converts like to say, oh, oh you, you. go back to Matthew chapter 7. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This this is something that is one of you know. There are several verses that even lost people know. 
God so loved the world, John 3.16. And there's this one. There's this one. Matthew chapter 7 again, verses 1 on to verse 5 now. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For what, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. If you're a saved King James Bible believing Christian, you know exactly what the Lord is talking about. But if you're a false convert faking it, saying you're a King James Bible believer, I just, just believe, just believe. And say, and say, we can't and mustn't judge other people's salvation. That's a problem. And why, verse 3, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of, out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou, here's, that's the word right there that ties it up. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now, people who say, who cling to, we can't judge other people's salvation. We mustn't judge others' fruits. You hide in something. You're hiding something. And you don't want to be judged yourself. Do you? Why else would you do that? Why else would you make such big protestation against judging other people? And, okay, now it says, notice in verse 5, it says, thou hypocrite. Beg your pardon, my house alarm is going off. <laughs> but notice in verse 5, it says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now there are some that say, that will come to these verses of Scripture and say, We're all sinners. And we are. And incidentally, in this video, I'm going to link an older video of mine about sinless perfection, that there's no such thing in this life. Because one of you might be decide to say, oh, Brad, you're preaching sinless perfectionism. I have a video on that, which I'm going to put in the description of this video. Okay? Go through the scriptures, just so you know. Okay? But they say that, some will say, well, we never can get to a point where the beam is out of our own eye so we can't judge another person because there's always something in us, right? Ah, no, 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 no. You hiding something, buddy. You're hiding something and you're putting up a defensive wall to protect your own skin. That's what you're doing. That is what you're doing. You're accountable to God. And whether you're saved or whether you're lost, you are going to give account of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. You are going to be held accountable by the Lord, either at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne. Which one is it going to be, buddy? Huh? But they, just, they, they put up that defensive thing. Have you ever run into that? Have you ever heard that before? Hmm? Beg your pardon. All right, sorry about that. I do beg your pardon. I had to turn off my uh, 
house alarm. I, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I apologize. Anyway, let's continue. In verse 5, our Lord sums it up real nicely. It's about being a hypocrite. Judging hypocritically. You want proof on that? Go to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 24. And these hyper-dispensationalists like to say this is specifically talking about the Jews, and they, they cite verse 17, which you can read on your own time. But note this. Okay? You notice how in Matthew chapter 7, I keep losing my mind going from there, okay? You note how in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Now go to Romans chapter 2, verses 21, on to verse 24. Thou therefore, which teachest another, Teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Verse 5, Matthew chapter 7, thou hypocrite. Back to Romans chapter 2, verse 22. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Back to Romans chapter 2. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Matthew chapter 7, verse 5 again. Do you get the point? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. We are not supposed to judge people hypocritically. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Hypocrite. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Hypocrite. You get it? I know you do. If you're saved, born again, you get it. But for those of you who are lost, who who hide behind judge not, it's talking about hypocritical judgment. Hypocritical judgment, people. That's what it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. Okay? Do you get it? I know you do. I know you do. So, there are those out there who say they are Christians, but they are not. Because in works they deny Him. But just hold to the name. And then when you question them, they hide, judge not. And then, sometimes you will quote scripture to them. And then they will say things like, you're just quoting scripture. Now, I've addressed, I, I think I addressed this in my last video. But I want to get into it a little bit more. 
You're just quoting scripture, not giving any, you're not expounding on any of it. He who is of God heareth God's words. Just paraphrase that, excuse me. My salvation video, by the way, I say nothing in that. But I let the scripture speak for itself, see. There are those out there who will quote scripture quite regularly as to boast themselves. I have been accused of that thing by many people and by brethren as well have indirectly said, well, Brad, you, you like to quote a lot of scripture, but you're just quoting scripture. Really, huh? Really? Um, what, 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 what does the Bible have to say? Does the Bible have anything to say about that, huh? You know? You know, you're supposed to talk to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Okay? We are supposed to meditate upon thy precepts. Okay? And talk about them. Okay, but oh, oh, the words in my heart. You're just talking, you're just quoting scripture, making yourself look good. You hiding something there, man, woman. You hiding something there. This is the sharpest weapon on the face of this earth. This will pierce anything, including you. Including me. There is a, could it be, <coughs> could it be that you don't like people who love the Lord and believe this book and speak often from it, that you don't like to hear people quote scripture because it cuts you? Huh? Yeah. You hide something, ain't you? Go to Psalm 119. Oh, yeah. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Beth. What's, what's Beth? Verses 9 on to verse 16. Go that place. Go that place. Now, people like to make arguments that when it says word in Psalm 119, that it's the oral spoken word. You Catholics like to hide behind that. But then again, you Catholics don't have a perfect Bible. You Catholics have to have your catechism or go to the church fathers or commentaries or whatever for them to explain to you what this means because you don't have the spirit of God in you. You're lost. Psalm 119, verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, oh, that I might not sin against thee. See, Brad, right there, it says it's in my heart. So what? You don't need to read it, huh? You don't need to hear or don't enjoy when other people quote scripture around you or to you? Let's continue. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. <laughs> I have rejoiced in the way of thy 
testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. See Brad right there. It says, I, the word is in my heart. Yeah. The word is, amen. The word is supposed to be in your heart. But there are those of you who say that to put up a defensive wall to hide something. What is it you're hiding? I wonder. I wonder. Now, Psalm 119, verses 33, on to 40. He. Okay? Psalm 119, verses 33, on to verse 40. He. That's the, the next, see? See? That's what I'm talking about. He. And see? Here. Beth. Okay. Psalm 119, verses 33 on to verse 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. What are the Lord's testimonies? Where are the Lord's testimonies that we can find them, trust them, rely upon them, and live them? Do you have to figure that one out by yourself, right? Hello? Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have long after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. And very quickly, Psalm 119, verses... 105 on to verse 107. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord according to thy word. Thy word. Thy word. King James Bible. The real Bible. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm going to give you a theory of why some people will cling to or say when you as a Bible-believing Christian are around others who claim to be Bible-believing Christians or professing Christians and you start talking about Scripture and start quoting Scripture because you love the Lord and believe the book and you love every word in this book. They say, oh, you're just quoting Scripture. You're doing that just to make yourself look good. Here's my theory. John chapter 3 verses 18 on to verse 21. John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. There's a difference between condemnation and being damned. Damned is hell. Condemned, 
It's a totally different thing. You can, like I said before, I think in the last video, you can be condemned and not damned. But once you're damned, bye-bye. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Let's say that. Okay. Read this verse out loud with me. Read verse 20 out loud with me. Who cares who's listening to you? Who cares? The Lord's listening to you. Ready? Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Yeah. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Oh, 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 oh. Hold your place. Hold your place. Psalm 119. Again, hold your place there. In John. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that's a lowercase w, not uh, uppercase w. Just so you know. Okay. If you're reading the Bible that has a capital W word there, you got a counterfeit. Okay? Just saying. Verse 20. Again, in John chapter 3. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. What's the matter? You afraid that the Holy Ghost within the believer who is quoting Scripture just because he loves the Lord and believes the book, and you're getting a little uneasy and fidgety? Why are you afraid that the Holy Ghost is going to utter something through that man or woman and just going to cut you right to your heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John chapter 12, John chapter 12, verses 44 on to verse 50. A little bit more about judging in the word of God again. John chapter 12, verses 44 on to verse 50. Go there, please. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Jesus Christ is the Father. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words, and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Now see, what he means by that at this time, he came as the Lamb. Okay? He came as King to offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. But the Jews rejected it, obviously. They were going to reject it. It was already written. But God would not be fair and just and equal if he didn't at least say, here I am, I'm God, 
I'm the Father. Here's the kingdom that I promised you. Come on, let's go. But they, they didn't, as it was written. Okay. So here, when he says that, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. It's exactly what it says. He didn't come there to judge the world at that time. Because he was the king offering the kingdom onto the Jews. Now, had the Jews accepted him as their king at that time, everything would have been different, see. But that's not the way it is. That's not the way it works. And you have scripture to verify that. Okay. We can only muse, imagine what would have happened if the Jews at that time, when God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, walking around, had offered the kingdom to the Jews and they had accepted it. Wow! We probably wouldn't have made it this far, would we, Ed? Who knows? We can only guess, right? Let's continue now. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Yeah, hold up. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say what I should speak. The skin suit, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, God the Father was the soul of Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? And the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit was the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's continue. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Look at verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. Now, judge him in the last day. Oh, here's that thing about judging again. Christian, false professing Christian, lost person, you are going to be judged according to this, the Word of God, the King James Bible, by what is written in here. Look at that verse. Look at the verse. Look at it. Okay? He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. Where are Christ's words? Okay? But here's another deeper thing. Who wrote the King James Bible? Now, you stop. If you go and say about the translators of 1611, were they the authors of the scripture? Or were they just the pen in the hand? Did, was Paul the author of the Pauline epistles? Or was he just the pen in the hand? See, what this comes down to is, do you truly believe that this King James Bible is perfect? Do you truly believe that? Huh? You call yourself a King James Bible-believing Christian. But you don't like to hear the scriptures quoted to you in conversation. You have a problem with people judging. 
you or other people. And then we just read, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Now some will say, well, oh, that's only the red words. Oh, shut your mouth. Or the red words, which they, the, those who like to say about the red words in the four Gospels, like to conveniently skip over the red words in Revelation. Okay? But um, they say, oh, it's only that. No. Who's the author of this book? Huh? Oh, it's the translators. Francis Bacon? The Mason. Uh, listen, to any of you who might see this, if you mention Francis Bacon in the comments section, I, I'm, I'm going to block you. I ain't got time for that stupidity. I really don't. I really don't. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> We, at the judgment seat of Christ, and also at the great white throne of judgment, we are going to be judged according to the standards of this book. You are not going to get to the judgment seat of Christ, and then all of a sudden, the Lord is going to pull out a new thing, a new set of scriptures, or a new script, and then judge you upon that new thing. No, 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 no. He's going, you are going to be judged by the book. Now, at the judgment seat of Christ, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. What is being judged is your works or your rewards, not your salvation. You make it to the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, you're in. You're going to heaven. Where you're going to be Standing in heaven is a totally different story. And that is what's going to be judged according to this book. And you as a lost person at the great white throne of judgment, you're going to be held accountable to the book. We are accountable to what God has written. And you as a King James Bible believing Christian, here's your owner's manual. Here's what you're supposed to live by. You look at me. You are a fool if your heart, your feelings are the standard of truth. You don't know your own heart. If you say that, you either know your own heart and just want to play along with it, or you're lost. Which one is it? Hmm? Which one is it? Do we have a perfect book? Huh? You say you're a King James Bible believing Christian? Or a professing Christian? Yeah. And you're, you're going to trust the Bible that comes from Rome. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two, verses six on to verse sixteen. Go there, please. This whole chapter was part of my um scholarly rhetoric and dialect video that I had to erase. But this is what the Lord wants me to speak about today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6, under verse 16. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, 
even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So see, it's a mystery. I mean, just let's keep reading. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Let's read verse 10 together out loud, slowly. Ready? But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Let's continue now. <clears throat> For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? The Spirit of man. The Spirit of man is not the Spirit of Christ. It's not the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. But is it? If it is, <clears throat> then we're in some trouble, ain't we? But it isn't. Let's continue. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. You see that? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. You see that? Let's continue. Now we have received, now we have received, not the spirit of the world. Now hold up. Look at verse 11. For what man knoweth the spirit of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Now look at verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The spirit of man is the spirit of the world. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Exegesis. <laughs> Homiletics. Hermeneutics. Who is this Herman guy, by the way? Exegesis. Yea, hath God said. <laughs> Scholars. Yeah, yeah. You use Jesuit scholarly rhetoric to try to pass off that you know what this says. And in doing that, you prove that you don't know one thing about what this book says. <laughs> Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Are you looking at that? Hmm? You, you looking at that, right? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Very quickly, these verses, the easy believism heretic, will hide behind saying that a lost person can't understand anything of Scripture. They first need to get them saved. Then let them know that they're not good. Then they can understand the scripture. Okay? Okay, that, that's what they hide behind. But, when you read Romans chapters 1, 2, and 3, verses 1 on the verse 18 specifically, lost people understand that. Because that is there for us, the saved people. 
to lead the lost person onto a awareness of themselves, to be broken by and cut by the sword of the Spirit. See? Let's continue. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Who's our judge? The Lord Jesus Christ. What is he judging us by? For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But the natural, verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If you're lost, and you have a Christian guiding you along the Romans' road, showing you your lost condition. The Spirit of God is working through that believer towards you to take this sword and cut you that you may know that, oh, wow, I'm in trouble. The easy believism heretic will come to verse 14, and hide behind it, to their fallacious argument that no lost person can understand anything in the scripture. Case in point, against that, there are Muslims out there who understand some of the scriptures, but of course they ain't getting the deeper things of scripture because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, okay? Tell me something. Those of you who hide behind, ju don't judge people. Who are, just believe, just believe. And get irritated with people who just love to quote scripture. Are you a natural man? Hmm? Are you a natural man? First Thessalonians. Whoops. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Now, if you're a false convert, an easy believism heretic, okay, you need to get saved. You need to repent of your self-righteousness. Your salvation is not predicated based on your intellectual decision to believe. You come to that belief by brokenness. Something that you don't have any idea of what that is. Oh, you might know it on a little level. But at the heart, you don't know anything about it. It's evident. Heretic. But, okay, if you're a truly saved and born-again Christian, King James Bible-believing Christian, you love the Lord, and you believe every word of this book, here's something that we ought to do. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14, on to verse 22. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, just believe, don't judge, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. And I fail at that. <laughs> I really do. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. 
rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. How could some of you who say you're a saved, born-again, King James Bible-believing Christian, how could you not even pray? That I don't, that, okay. If there, if there are those out there of you who, who cling to the words in my heart, I don't read my Bible because it's in my heart, okay? And you're not refreshing yourself. You're not living by faith and practice, okay? But on top of that, you don't pray? There's something wrong there, buddy, girl. There's something wrong Okay, if you're not even praying, you need to be in this book. You do. You do. Because if you're not in the book, keeping the memory fresh, you know, being renewed in the spirit of your mind, hello, you can drift away into Never Never Land and get carried away with all kinds of weird stuff. If you're not even praying, if you're not even praying, in everything give thanks, in everything, good and bad. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Quench not the spirit. No prayer life. Despise not prophesying. Being around people who like to, you know, quote this book, talk about this book, muse on the scriptures, compare spiritual things with spiritual, you know. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Christian music, television, Sports. <laughs> One brother from Northern Ireland made a beautiful comment on that. Um, beautiful, just like him. Yeah. Amen, brother. You know. Yeah. Worldly carnal Christians, right? Yeah. Justifying it. Hiding behind these things. Don't judge me. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 5 and 6. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 5 and 6. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except, except ye be reprobates? Here's the, here's the thing. Maybe some of you don't want to examine yourself because you know, but just playing at it. Maybe that's why. It's like, we, we can't judge anyone's salvation unless we meet them personally. Man, that's weak. That's very weak. Can 
can't judge someone's salvation. You're a hypocrite if you do, right? Or, or I don't want to hear, uh, don't talk about too much scripture. You're just boasting yourself. Here's the thing. How do you examine yourself? Off of other Christians? If you do, you're not wise. Um, beg your pardon. If you're judging yourself off of other Christians of today, you're stupid. Love you. But how do you examine yourself? How do you prove your own self? It's not like, oh, am I afraid, so I'm going to go jump off my roof to prove I'm not afraid? No, no. You examine yourself. Oh, oh. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 105. Huh? Anyone? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. A light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man, man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Hello? You examine yourself in the light of Scripture. Maybe that's why you don't want to hear it. Maybe that's why you don't want to read it. Maybe that's why you don't want people judging other people or you say, we can't judge other people. You're a hypocrite. First, pull out the beam out of your own eye when it's clearly talking about hypocritical judgments. Yeah. 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 Throw it back at me. Go ahead. What about you, Brad? Um, when I read this book, I'm judging myself daily. Every day when I read this book, I'm judging myself. And you know what? I usually don't live up to it. Because I'm a sinner who is chief. The worst of the worst. I'm not a good person. Maybe that's why. And there's another thing, too, that I have to address. The natural changed life after salvation. Brethren, sisters, there are those out there who protest the changed life after salvation. And they put the hinge on it, well, you don't have to. It comes naturally. It just happens. Not by your own doing. If someone is preaching against or saying you don't need a I changed life after you're saved. They're not saved themselves. They're heretics. They're false brethren. There was one lady who um, I unfortunately lost my cool with in a comment um, in uh, Brian Denlinger's PayPal video and um, the uh, newest one that he did uh, at the time of me uploading this. And that lady appeared again playing this sweet, innocent, oh, help me to understand the changed life doctrine. It's like, you fake devil Jezebel, wicked little heretic. Could t I, I knew, I knew by the way she put her comment. I could see it in her rhetoric, what she was doing. And I called her on it. And it's like, oh, you're getting an attitude with me because I'm asking a question? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. You're fake. You're fake. And this same woman had the audacity to call a beloved brother a saved man. 
a, what was it? A blasphemous lost work salvation heretic because of the changed life that comes naturally after you are saved. It's a process. It don't happen like that. No, no, no. no. Sometimes it takes, well, it does. It takes your whole life. Step by step. Here a little, there a little, you know. But if there are those out there who preach against a changed life, after salvation, it happens naturally. People who preach against a changed life after salvation, they're not saved. There's no way. You go ahead and call me legalistic. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Your life is going to change without you having anything to do with it after you are truly saved and born again. It just happens. What can I say? Get over it. But if you're preaching against it, you're lost. You ain't saved. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way someone who is truly saved and born again, who has the Lord living inside them, preaching against the changed life that happens naturally because of the Lord, not you, but because of the Lord after you are saved. Only a lost heretic think would say stuff like that brethren only a lost false brethren false heretic whatever you get the point only someone who is not truly saved a deceiver an infiltrator will say such blasphemous stuff like that It just comes. It just comes. What can I say? You might not know that because you're not saved. Now, there are saved brethren who really put up a big <laughs> fight against it. And they do things that lost people would do. They would do things that lost people would do. Use tactics that lost people. Brethren, sisters, if you got to wear a vesture or a silly little earring or whatever, ladies, it's all good with you. Or if you got to wear something that says you're a Christian on your vesture and people don't know you're a Christian just by you walking down the bat, 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 you know, because the Lord is in you. If you have to do something yourself on the outside to prove to the lost world around you that you are truly saved and born again. <laughs> you probably are not truly saved and born again. What's with you, man? You're doing things that a lost person would, would do? How do you differ differentiate the saved and the lost? By their profession? The devils even believe and tremble. How do you tell which is which? And you got these, pardon my language, but you have these schmucks preaching against a changed life after salvation. Because they're not saved themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Give me a break, man. All right. Enough of my yapping. All right. Let's go to the obvious. Let's play Captain Obvious. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, uh, verse 5, verse 17. One verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. One verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Change life. Okay. Now, now, Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 26. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 unto 26. Now the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, not just a little stupid Buddha statue or the statue of Mary or your favorite patron saint or the things of the Pope. <coughs> no. Yourself. You're an idol of yourself. Eh. Just saying. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Emulating. Wrath. Strifes. Seditions. Heresies. Envyings. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelings and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Now, a saved brother can, or sister can, dip into this again. But if you have, if you are saved and born again, and if any of you have messed up in sin before, hi! And just had the Lord just... Yeah, do everything short, but pull the rug out from under you, and you smash your favorite skull against the concrete. Okay? You can dip and fall and slip back into that for a little while. But if you are truly saved and born again, the Lord is going to beat your butt. And he's going to pull you out of it. Or he's going to hand you over to it to the, for the destruction of the flesh so that the spirit may be saved. Okay? Hold your place here. Let's, let's, I, I quoted that. Let's, uh, Let's read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4 on to verse 6. Hold your hand there in Galatians and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4 on to verse 6. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Let's read chapter 7, or verse 7. Purge out the, therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Yeah, you're right. Verse 8. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Brian Denlinger put it in a very simple, brutally honest way, which I will not. But, um, being handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, more or less that you might have your life taken away from you to prevent you from doing any more harm to yourself or others. Not to say what harm you may do to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and how you might blaspheme this book. Okay? Let's continue now in Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. A lot of people can fake that. Meekness, 
temperance. Against such there is no law. Meekness and temperance, very hard to fake for false converts. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be des desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The works of the flesh versus the works of or the fruit, excuse me, the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. I have a real hard time with people who call them my brothers and sisters, and yet they behave and do things that lost people would do. Without even a second thought, without even an acknowledgement that they did such. I have a big problem with that. Now, I, I, you know, things like that are forgiven. It's like, whatever, that's your problem between you and the Lord. That is, you know, I don't, I don't hold grudges. I don't. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. But if I'm going to hold a grudge, I got to remember that if anyone could hold a grudge against me, it would be the Lord. I know that's not pertinent on my salvation. I know that. We get that. But I'm just saying, you know. If you're saved and born again and call yourself saved and born again, why are you doing things that lost people would do? What is, how do people differentiate between the true and the false? By the Spirit of the Lord who is in the truly saved individual. And you know what is true by knowing this book. Get it? And of course, the greatest passage on the changed life after salvation, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. Now, the easy, belie easy believism heretic will say, you don't have to. Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, well, if you, if you could be saved and not be in Christ, the, I've heard that said by these easy believism heretics. Someone can be saved and not be in Christ. The Lord rebuke you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It just happens. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. See, it's up to you. It's up to you, right? Let's keep reading. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of, of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Now, it is true. God is not going to hold a gun to your head making you walk a sanctified walk. Neither is the devil going to hold a gun to your head forcing you not to walk a sanctified walk. But as we saw... That if you keep messing around, sooner or later, you're going to be given over to Satan that you may be taken out of here. Die. Killed. Bluntly put. You can only mess around with the Lord so long before it catches up to you, brethren. Hi. Let's continue. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned. 
Christ. Come unto me, ye who are levy are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy, and my yoke is light. I just paraphrase that, beg your pardon, but take my yoke upon you. Learn of him. Learn of him. Not learn from him. You do learn from Christ, yes, but it's learn of him. Personal relationship. Remember what we read in Matthew, where he says, Depart from me. I never knew you. Personal relationship. And the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, will guide you into all truth. Okay? You are to know the Lord Jesus Christ through this book, through the Lord living in you. But ye have not so learned Christ. Oh, you've learned the rhetoric. You've learned how to make the shoe that you are. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, that indwells anyone who is truly saved and born again, you don't have. It's but By judging you according to this book, which they have a big problem with, don't they? Let's continue. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, how do you hear him and be taught by the Lord? That's a pretty no-brainer, right? Let's continue. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. See, it's a choice. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How do you be renewed in the spirit of your mind? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hold, 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 hold your place there. Hold your place there, okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 25 in Ephesians chapter 4. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Oh boy, I blow that one when me and my wife butt heads. <laughs> oh boy. And we both pay for it. Neither give place to the devil. Don't judge me. You're scripture proud. You're boasting your, your stuff about scripture by just quoting it all the time. You don't have to have a changed life. It's optional. You lie, and you ain't saved. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. That needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Twofold. Doctrinally, yes. But how are you in your conversation? Got a problem with foul language, do you, huh? Speaking it? I have a problem with foul language. I hate hearing it. I usually, to my shame, won't speak up when I hear a brother or a sister continually. Every, more than every once in a while, we'll drop an S-bomb or the S-word. Okay? Well, it's not a swear to me. Oh, what? Oh, it's relative to you, huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's continue. 
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, being handed over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay. When the, the Lord gives you over like that, and you don't come back, oh boy. Put this in your head. Those of you who are hiding behind, don't judge. No changed life. You false brethren. Okay, if, okay, let's say that you are truly saved and you're grieving the Holy Ghost to death, that he's going to hand you over to, to have you killed. Hello? Hello? Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking <laughs> be put away from you with all malice. All malice. Like, ah! And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Oh, but this is optional. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. First Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4, on to verse 6. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? And when you read in 2 Corinthians, this guy, who this was written about, repents. Brethren, there are, there are a whole lot of false converts out there. There are a whole lot of false brethren. There are a whole lot of people who say one thing, and they ain't the thing that they say they is. How do you know? Your heart. You got to meet them face to face. Again, when 100% of you, my brothers and sisters, that I have met through YouTube, through emails, through Google Hangouts, okay, I have never physically met you face to face. So in order for me to truly know that someone is truly saved and born again, I got to meet them and shake their hand. Ah, no. Ah, uh -uh, buddy. No, 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 no. You hiding something. You don't want to hear the scriptures. Oh, you're just boasting your own self. Got a problem with it, huh? Well, you afraid that the Spirit of God who lives within that safe believer might cut you with this thing, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You got a problem with judging. You got a problem with copious amounts of Scripture. Oh, and you don't have to have a changed life. It's optional. After you're saved. Brother, sister, friend, foes. If that kind of stuff is what you're hiding behind, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to call you lost. I'm going to say you ain't saved. I'm going to say you're a false brother, a false sister. You're going to have to deal with that. Examine yourself. Ex 
examine yourself. Examine yourself, brethren. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. I woke up this morning with this in my lap. I did my stuff, you know, did the dishes, got laundry I gotta fold. Got to make some lunch after this while this is uploading, but uh, it's what the Lord gave me. Early this morning at around 2.30, I slept in late today, till about 2.30. I hope one of you, someone, will get something out of this. And if I've offended someone... If I've offended you by what has been presented to you, good. Maybe you need to examine yourself. Maybe you need to see whether or not you are in the faith. Maybe you need to stop playing games. Maybe. Just maybe. Okay, I'm going to go. I love you guys. I hope you get something out of this. Um, brother Christopher, if you make it through the end, if you even watch this, praying for you, brother. I hope you get that job. And uh, for many of the other brethren that I pray for. And those are you, my enemies. I shudder to think the game you are playing with your own soul as if it is your own to play a game with. That's it. I love you. I have no idea when my next video is going to be or what it's going to be about. The Lord can very well tomorrow morning before I go to work, as he has done, be like, hey, Brad. Okay? So. But for now, Y'all have yourselves a wonderful day. I love you guys. And in Jesus' name, God's people said amen. Bye-bye.